a no more stinky monkeys.com production. Radio station WPAT was a staple in my house growing up, and they played very light pop music, the most modern of it being artists like our next one. I grew up with her songs, and while they were enjoyable, I took them for granted. It wasn't until 1997 that I took another look at them. That was the year the Julia Roberts comeback movie came out, my best friend's wedding. She had begged her other best friend, this gay man, to pretend to be her date for the engagement party, and fawn over her to make the groom jealous. He went overboard to attempt to embarrass her, and in one classic scene in a crowded restaurant, he starts singing this artist's most famous song to her in a cappella. Suddenly, the entire wedding party is singing along, and eventually the whole restaurant, with even the waiters and busboys getting involved. It was funny and exciting and made me a huge fan of the song, and eventually the artist. That is why she is number 165, Dionne Warwick. Marie Dionne Warwick was born in... East Orange, New Jersey, 1940, to a music manager and a gospel record promoter for Chess Records. As well as managing the Drinkard Sisters, her mother was a member of the gospel singing family who had been performed for RCA Records. Among the members was Dion's aunt, Emily, known as Sissy, who is uh, Whitney Houston's mother. Dion performed her first gospel solo at age six, six and often joined the Drinkard Sisters in concert. She grew up in a racially and culturally mixed neighborhood and got a scholarship to college for music education. She ended up getting her master's there and eventually an honorary doctorate. In 1958, while still in high school, she and three other singers formed the Gospel Airs and won the weekly amateur singing contest at the Apollo Theater. They immediately started their professional careers when a man came running backstage looking for backup singers for Sam the Man Taylor. They eventually became known as the Sweet Inspirations and had some chart success or were mostly sought after as back, back, background singers for big names like Aretha Franklin and Elvis Presley. It was while singing back up for the Drifters that songwriter Burton Backrack first noticed her. He was working in the frame, famed Grill Building and co-writing with Hal David. Backrack said in a, in a Time Magazine interview in 1967 that she had a tremendous strong side and a delicacy when singing softly, like miniature ships in bottles. He asked her to sing several demos for songs he was trying to sell to his studios. One of them was It's Love That Really Counts. It would later be recorded by the Shirelles for Scepter Records, but the president, Florence Greenberg, said, forget the song and sign the girl. <laughs> Warwick signed with Backrack and David and eventually Scepter Records. This allowed them the freedom to work closely with her and compose more challenging songs than usually heard on Top 40 radio. Her education and background also helped immensely. After having a fight with them and saying, Don't Make Me Over, they wrote a song for her by that, by that name and they had their first top 40 hit in 1962. Her name was misspelled on the record, Warwick instead of Warwick with two R's, but she liked it and kept the change. She followed this up with Anyone Who Had a Heart, Do You Know the Way to San Jose, and then one of her biggest hits, Walk On By. She became a fixture on the charts throughout the 1960s with Backrack and David writing most of her songs. Then came Message to Michael, Alfie, and I'll Never Fall in Love Again. And of course, her greatest song, my favorite, and the one, one they featured in the Julie Roberts movie, I Say a Little Prayer for You. In 1971, she left Scepter and signed the most lucrative contract in female singer history at the time with Warner Brothers for $5 million. She and Backrack and David went their separate ways in the 70s, and their hits went along with them. Until 1979, when Barry Manilow produced her comeback, I'll Never Love This Way Again. And then she began to host the weekly music show, Solid Gold. In 1985, she teamed with Gladys Knight, Stevie Wonder, and Elton John on the benefit single, That's What Friends Are For. The $3 million it made helped fund research for AIDS. The single was number one on three different charts, R&B, adult, adult contemporary, and pop, and it was played at my wedding. <laughs> In the morning I wake up, I say a little prayer for you, from the, from the family.